Good morning. I uh, was asked uh, the last time I was here uh, to introduce myself. Uh, and uh, so I wanted to take a few minutes to just tell you my name is Sherry Miller. Of course, it's in the bulletin, but a little bit about my past is I'm in my 28th year of ordination within the ELCA. Um, the first 15 of those I was in parishes or congregations in western Pennsylvania. Um, had a wonderful time there and uh, moved closer to my parents who live in southern York County. So I, I hail these days from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. It was a beautiful drive down this morning. Thank, thank God that heat is gone. Let's hope it stays away. Uh, but it was a very nice ride down in, in the convertible this morning to, to come and join you for worship. And thank you for inviting me uh, to be your worship leader this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son,
The first reading is from Jeremiah 23, verses 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So, will, so I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> The second reading is from Ephesians 2, 11 through 22. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, by physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of, the, of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you have once were far off, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, in his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. 
He has established the law with its commandments and ordinances, and he might create in himself one new humanity in place of two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through them both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. shall be called. You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel for this, the eighth Sunday after Pentecost, comes from the sixth chapter of St. Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord. O Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them. And they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region, and they began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. You know, in most cases, the Bible is a very exciting story. People are doing exciting things. Jesus is saying wonderful things. I'm going to use really great grammar here and say, today ain't one of those times. Jesus is actually saying, hey, let's, let's take a step back. Jesus is saying, let's take a rest. And it's amazing because all the other places in the Bible, it, it, it's very, very fast action. Jesus is doing this, and he's immediately doing that, and he's saying something amazing, and he's teaching something that you have to sit down and scratch your head to figure out. Today, no. Jesus is saying, disciples, you've worked hard. You've told me you've worked hard. You've done great work. But now... Let's take a step back. Let's go somewhere and let's rest. Which is just, it's completely amazing to me that Jesus says this because Jesus has so little time with us that he's, he's going to take this, this little time. But, you know, everyone who works for God can't do it constantly all the time. Jesus himself needed a little bit of rest. He, when, he, when he went for this rest, he didn't do anything intentionally on the rest. People came to him and things happened, but 
Jesus took a step back, and his, his, his disciples took a step back. So it's like this with a lot of folks. I mean, pastors who need a rest. People who work in the church need a rest every now and then. People who work every day helping people need a rest. And so I think what we can do is we can take a look at those people, the disciples who were working all the time for, for God, for his glory, and thank them. And the people in our lives who are constantly working for us, we can thank them and let them have the rest we need. I realize this wasn't that exciting, but the, the gospel, it's, it's just let's take a rest. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to serve you. And we thank you for giving us the opportunity to occasionally take a rest and to continue later on in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When I was here two weeks ago, Jesus was being rejected in his hometown. And then he sent the disciples out two by two. And last week we heard the story about the beheading of John the Baptist. And you might think that those two uh, gospel passages are not connected. But Mark has this tendency to sandwich stories together. He forms bookends around a story, and these bookends usually have a purpose. As he builds these stories, he is building on the previous, and he contrasts, and he interprets, and then he provides even more insights to us, who are the readers of these texts. I relate this to like giving an example. Sometimes the examples Jesus gives support what he is trying to say. And sometimes they counter or they balance out with the opposite view, just to make us think. Today, we are placed in the middle of the story again. But the key significant portions of these stories, the feeding of the 5,000, and Jesus walking on water are left out. What we have left are the parts of the stories, the brackets, the short stories, before and after. And perhaps they leave us a bit bewildered. So let's dig in. Today we are back in Galilee. The disciples have returned from their excursion into the world. Now, just think for a moment. It had to be a significant experience for them. As they were disciples, meaning learners or followers, and then they were being sent out, and they came back, and being sent out, they are now apostles. They came back to celebrate with Jesus all that they had done and taught. And as they returned, they realized that they are tired. Who wouldn't be after such an excursion? and that they've been so busy that they haven't even had time to eat lunch most days. Now, I can only imagine the disciples' experiences. Can you envision the things that they did, the encounters they had, perhaps the confidences they built, or the accomplishments they've attained? They are eager, eager to share this all with Jesus all that they had seen and all that they had heard, everything that they had done, everything they had taught. You know that kind of energy. We get that from the excitement of a child from time to time. But yet we also know the adventure was exhausting. And so Jesus acknowledges this and he wants to go someplace to rest. Come to a deserted place and rest a while, he says. Now, I have to add a little bit of commentary here. Perhaps that was before our post-pandemic. After the pandemic, 
Some of us long to be a little bit busy those busy days we had before where we were able to be in crowds and not have to think about it. So this gospel text has a different view today than it did three years ago. Anyway, Jesus' response to their excitement and storytelling is to want to take them away to rest. And as they go on their way to find that rest, the scriptures tell us that people followed or they went on ahead of them and they met them there. And you and I know that where there are multiple people, sometimes there is not rest. This would be a great, exciting story for this hot summer month of July if that was the end of the story. I can see them getting into a boat, taking some deep breaths, feeling their fatigue, those sore muscles being relaxed after they have kind of ignored their hunger and neglected their bodies for so long, they get this rest. And I really wish in some ways that that would have been the end of our pericope for today and that Jesus and the disciples end their day around a campfire, admitting their limitations and practicing Sabbath rest, a vacation. But my friends, that is not the end of the story. Instead of finding rest and being refreshed, they discover lots of people, all sorts of people, a crowd even, we are told, and that crowd has needs and they're hungry for the word and for healing and they're hungry for dinner. Not only did it happen once, but according to our text, this throng of people in the second portion of our reading today was there also. When they arrive in Gennesaret, immediately people recognize Jesus and they rushed about or they ran to tell everyone that Jesus is here. And people were pushing through the crowd, bringing their loved ones near Jesus simply to touch the end of his cloak. That's what scripture tells us. So instead of giving us this model of taking rest for our bodies and our minds and the well-being of our ministry during the summer, Jesus tells us, the scriptures tell us, that he had compassion upon them because they were like sheep without a shepherd and he began to teach them many things. Now, this has caused nearly every commentator that I have read over the last few weeks to focus on the interruptions of life and how Jesus reacted to the interruptions of life and that would lead then to sermons of preachers standing here in the pulpits telling you all how we should react to the interruptions in our lives. That's what I've read everywhere and in some ways we can relate to that. We've all had times like that in our lives too. The tension between our plans and the interruptions our expectations and the unexpected. Life as we want it to be and life as it happens. Every one of us, every one of us could share a story about that. The final days of a semester with papers due and exams that need to be taken. Or the baby waking up early from what you thought would be a quiet hour. Or taking a new job and finding that you are not doing what you planned and that you are doing what, was, what you never expected to do. The last hours before the movers show up. The diagnosis that interrupts the retirement plans. The weeks leading up to the deadline of a large project. A shattered dream, a divorce, a death. It happens in small ways and in very large ways. Our life plans get interrupted in a thousand different ways and the unexpected happens all along the way of life. A pastor friend shared a story with me about the busyness of ministry. He said, I was very busy coming and going from one meeting to another, and I passed a woman whose son had been struggling with depression. I was literally running from one meeting in one building to another because I was late, and as I passed her, I stopped, turned around, and jogged back to her. How's your son, I asked. And I asked it a little out of breath because I was running. And 
He said, we chatted for about five minutes and then I went on to my meeting. A week later, he continues, I got an email from her and it was a sermon for me on that day, one I will always remember. It stated, I know you were busy last week, but I, it meant the world to me that you stopped on your way somewhere else to ask about me. And as I thought about it, it occurred to me that most of Jesus' ministry was on the way to somewhere else. He was willing to be interrupted, and that's where his interactions happened, in the interruptions. So thanks, Pastor, for being interrupted. Thanks for being like Jesus. And he shared that story not to toot his own horn, he said. In fact, he shared it because he was moved by the email, because he realized that typically most of his ministry was run business-like, and as an efficient person, he hated interruptions. Yet it was in the interruption, he says, that I was able to provide ministry, compassion. Now all that would make for a fine sermon, but this week, this very week, I heard something different from this gospel. And if you think about it, that's the amazing thing about scriptures. Today you hear one thing, tomorrow you hear another from the same passage. But what caught my attention this week was the thought, when was the last time I interrupted Jesus? All those crowds were gathered around interrupting Jesus. But when was the last time I interrupted Jesus? I know that he is talking about all those who do not have a shepherd. And I know that I have a shepherd and that I know him, I think, quite well. But I also look at the world differently since this pandemic. I don't know about you, but I look at this world differently for lots of different reasons. All the hoarding, the self-centeredness, people's reactions to it, life slowing down, all of it. And after being isolated, I hunger for interaction. And perhaps maybe the people flocking to Jesus in those biblical times were hungry for interactions too. I feel, after being isolated, I want to feel connected or reconnected with people. Perhaps, maybe, that's what the people from biblical times were seeking on that day. They were seeking connection with Jesus. And after being isolated, I most definitely want to feel safe. And perhaps they were seeking safety in their day as well. So you see, I want to interrupt Jesus today. I want to seek Jesus in this text today. I want to seek rest. I want to seek God first, his kingdom and his righteousness. I want rest for my weary soul. And I know that interrupting Jesus, he is the one who will provide rest for me. Matthew 28, Matthew 11, 28 through 30 tell me, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Luke 11, 9 and 10. My friends, I want to interrupt Jesus so that I can have life abundantly today. The humble shall see this and be glad and your heart shall live that seek God. Psalm 69, 32. For thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, Seek me that you may live. Amos 5. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Matthew 6, 25. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Matthew 10, 39. I want to be one of those among the crowd seeking strength when I become weak. 
Jesus strengthens and he studies our way so we may mount wings like eagles to soar above the earth's circumstances, to run and to not grow weary. Isaiah 40, 31. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. 1 Chronicles 16, 11. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those who hearts, whose hearts are fully committed to him. 2 Chronicles 16, 9. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Mark 12.30 I want to be the one who, who is interrupting today because I want to seek joy and gladness with Jesus. With everlasting joy to crown your head, gladness will overtake you and sorrow and sighing will flee away, according to Isaiah 35.10. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say continually, the Lord is magnified, Psalm 40, 16. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of the master. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. 1 Chronicles 16:10. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. John 15, 11. You have made known the ways of life to me. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Acts 2, 28. My friends, God never forsakes those who diligent, diligently seek him. So today I want to interrupt Jesus and seek him. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. And those who look at him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. Psalm 34, 4 through 5. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will result in my deliverance. Philippians 1, 19. Those who trust in him will never be abandoned. Psalm 9, 10. He is a fortified tower of safety for all who run to him. Proverbs 18.10 The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and he saves them. Psalm 145.18-20 Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and he broke away their chains. Psalm 107, verses 13 and 14. I want to cry out to Jesus today. I want him to save us from all this distress. I want to gain wisdom and understanding through my interruptions today. The foolishness of God is wiser than all human wisdom, 1 Corinthians 1.25. From his throne flows the discernment to live every day to the fullest, making the most of every opportunity, Ephesians 5.15 and 16. Evil men do not understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand all things, Proverbs 28.5. Seek his will in all that you do, and he will show you which path to take. Proverbs 3, 6. You see, these folks, these sheep without a shepherd, discovered longing, a longing to see his kingdom come. They renewed their endurance to run the race of life. And I want to reclaim that for us too, for the church for all of my friends and the people that I have met along the way, for myself. I want to claim that. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, for the soul who seeks him. Lamentation 3, 21 through 25. You will know that I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. 
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled, Matthew 5, 6. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed through faith, for faith, as it is written, the one who is righteous will live by faith. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. Romans 5.18 Yeah, I'm already feeling better. Today I want to interrupt Jesus. I want to tell him what we've gone through. And I want to ask him to stay very close to us today. As I was working on this sermon, I found many articles about interruption. There was one titled, Nine Ways to Politely Interrupt the Conversation. There was another one that said, Experts say these 11 hacks can help you be a better listener in just three days. I don't want to be polite about this. I don't want to be polite about this. I want, I need a strong, a need, I need to know, a strong need. I have this need that sends me out into the field without food to listen to a man speak. I have this need that I want to go through the cities and the marketplaces begging to touch the fringe of a cloak. I do not need to listen better. I want to interrupt him. I want to hear him speak my name. I want to touch his cloak, stare into his eyes, and long for that love and that compassion. I want to know and seek and find. We've been taught enough about being polite and to not interrupt. But I tell you this day, I tell you we will get a God who hears our cry of sadness and who hears our cries of joy. We will not get a God who hates. We will not get a God who divides or qualifies. We will experience a God with compassion. I want to be the type of follower who will drop anything, anything, so that I can see Jesus. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick at the marketplaces, and they begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. They touched his garments. And if you look at the Greek word that is used here, it is actually a word meaning to save. So those who touched Jesus' garments were not simply healed. They were wholly healed. They were saved. So salvation in this text is physical. It is emotional, 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 it is tangible, and it is entirely complete. In this text, salvation is here. So after a pandemic, after the isolation, after the behavior of our fellow human beings, after the grief and the loss and the death and all the layers that come with that, after all the fear, all I want to do is touch his garments. And everything I want to inter interrupt, everything I want to interrupt, I want to touch his cloak. And my friends, I invite you I invite you to interrupt Jesus today, too. Amen.
Please join with me in professing our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, please rise, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. Tend your church, O oh God. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel. Raise up new leaders and encourage those who are pursuing a call to ministry. Embolden all who are baptized to embody your love and your justice. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Restore your creation, O oh God. Sustain croplands and pastures and safeguard all farm animals and livestock. Preserve lakes and rivers and streams that offer refreshment. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters and protect coastlands threatened by rising oceans. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Reconcile the nations, O oh God. Break down the dividing walls that make us strangers to one another and unite us as one holy human family. <laughs> Equip leaders to deal wisely with conflict and guide diplomats to seek peaceful solutions. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Heal your people, O oh God. Look with compassion upon immigrants and exiles and all who are afraid or feel lost. Give rest to those who are weary, comfort to those who are grieving, and recovery to those who are ill. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy is great. Nourish this congregation, O oh God. Prepare a table where we receive food for our hungering spirits. Renew our commitment to provide for one another and revitalize our ministries of feeding and nurturing hungry neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You lead us home, O oh God. We give thanks for all who have died, now citizens with the saints. As you have received them into your heavenly home, so welcome all of us to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Are we allowed to share the sign of the peace, or are we just From peace afar. everybody? Okay. <laughs> New times these days. Soon, very soon. Please be seated.
things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We have a few announcements this morning. Uh, first, as always, if you have anything to share or if you have some announcements that you would like to make, please make sure that you contact the church office and let Martha know so that we can get those included. Um, Priscilla has a couple of things that she would like to share with us regarding VBS and the call committee. Make sure you turn the mic on. Thank you. Cool. Okay, first of all, I am really sorry I forgot my mask. It is over in Luther Hall. I was working getting things ready for Bible school and I took it off because it was hot. And please, if I go out into the community like Target, I have, I, I've only been to the grocery store probably half a dozen times. I double mask. So I'm just horrified that I forgot. And I apologize because I truly believe that wearing masks is extremely important. Okay, number one, call committee. Last week, you all turned in your surveys on critical tasks required for a pastor. I was pretty happy. In the short turnaround time, we got 35 responses. I did not, there will be an email going out. Here are the top five. Receiving 31, preaching and worship. And we included worship and music with that because we didn't think that those could be separated out really. Number two is, I'm sorry, 28 votes, pastoral care and visitation, which includes ministry and daily life, seniors and chaplaincy. 19 votes, Christian ed, including children's ministry, spiritual formation and direction, those would be, um, the classes like table talk that the pastor had, Pastor Matt had offered, etc., and it also included teaching. Eighteen, building a sense of community, and nine, youth and family ministry. The interesting thing was, even after all those numbers were combined, or those groups were combined, only one item moved places. The, uh, the, the five were the five. It's just one moved uh, in order. So thank you very much. We can use that information on the um, site ministry profile. And the call committee will be meeting each Thursday for the next two weeks at 7. So we are working. Bible school. Today we are talking about the, women, the woman at the well. And... The theme is women of the Bible. Anybody have any idea what was important about the woman at the well? What? She wasn't well, she wasn't Jewish. She was a Samaritan. Anything else? She took Jesus' good news out into the world after he had shared with her that he was the Messiah and the living water, she ran and told everyone in her village. 
And so she is important because she helped spread the word about Jesus, the Messiah is here. Today, we will be doing some water experiments. We have raisins, and we're going to put them in regular water and then some special water and observe what happens to them. We have some little foamy things that if you wet them, they will attach to each other in water. Of course, there's the Bible story, and there's some uh, word games, and uh, there's a little bit of a snack. Not a whole lot, but that's okay. Um, I was going to order pizza, but nobody signed up yet, so I didn't really want to order pizza because I didn't know how many. So. I hope that your grandchildren or your kids or your nieces or nephews will come on over. I'm all set up. Um, I will be over there waiting. Thank you. Okay, next. <clears throat> the back to school program, formerly known as uh, the backpack program, is underway. Please make your donations by August 1st. We need to purchase approximately 175 filled backpacks and extra supplies for eight schools in the area. If you have any questions about the backpack program, see Betty Lou Boynton right there. Raise your hand up high, Betty Lou, so everybody knows where you are. And she will fill you in on all the details and what we need to do to get this taken care of. It's been a blessing the last few years, and uh, it just keeps growing and growing every year. So thank you so much for sharing that, Betty Lou. Tomorrow night, church council will be meeting in Luther Hall at 7 p.m. Everybody is welcome to attend. Everybody is welcome to come. If you would like to ask the question or petition the council, please call Martha by tomorrow so we can get your name on the agenda. Without you being on the agenda, it's, we're pretty limited as to what we can do. You're allowed to listen, but we have to have you on the agenda in order to call on you to speak. Please uh, remember, don't forget to remember uh, the joint family and friends of Doug Widmeyer on August the 8th, which is coming up very soon at 2 o'clock to celebrate a life of service to our church and our community. The celebration will include music performed by the American Pops Orchestra and our own Heather Watkins, our choir director. Um, there will be remarks, remarks by the Honorable Bob Wise, former governor of West Virginia and a member of Congress from West Virginia's Eastern Panhandle. If you want further information, please contact Martha. She can get you all of the RSVP information. Friends Feeding Friends would love to thank everybody for your amazing support. Uh, we still need socks and we still need underwear and we're still looking for more personal hygiene items for the kits that we're assembling. There are still some offering envelopes waiting for pickup, and I believe they're on the back pew back there. Please make sure and make every effort to pick them up by July 31st. Those not picked up by July 31st will be recycled. After last week's overwhelming vote, we have started the process on repairs to our building. Bess, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Turn, turn on, Mike, Michael. Turn on. Where is the turn on? Is that it? Yep. Okay. Hello. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> we would like to extend a big thank you to everyone who was able to attend the congregational meeting. It was challenging to bring people together during the, pan the tail end, we hope, of a pandemic, let alone during the summer, but we ultimately reached quorum and thank each and every one of you who made the attempt to attend. On the issue of the disposition of the Bennett property, you voted to sell the property. This decision was pressing since mortgage interest and lawn maintenance charges and so forth continue for as long as we own the property. We are in the process of listing the property with Perry Realty of Berkeley Springs. Many thanks go to Linda Payne and Jerry Olson for taking the lead on cleaning out and inventorying the property as well as working with the realtor. We also offer thanks to Pastor Matt Day for ministering as executor of the estate in accordance with Elaine Bennett's final wishes. 
on the issue of the mandated repairs to the church building and next door, you voted to proceed with the repairs. To pay for them, you voted to liquidate the ELCA Mission Investment Fund Certificate that has a balance of approximately $62,000, and that is on its way. The residual funds um, above and beyond the $40,000 are to be reinvested in the Thrivent Mutual Fund account. This decision was urgent because the city of Martinsburg required good faith activity on the repair items they cited last October. Additionally, the city might st uh, still have grant funds available, and we have submitted a grant application for $5,000. Um, that would offset somewhat the cost of the repairs. We are proceeding with the contract with Modern Renovations for the work and completing the um, grant application. I told you about that. Again, we recognize and thank Linda and Jerry for working with Modern as well as Linda Shoebridge for um, writing the grant application. Diane Shoebridge. Uh, I'm sorry, who did I say? I apologize. Diane Shoebridge. I have it right here. It's many thanks again for attending on Sunday and participating in this necessary work. We hope to see everyone again at worship very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Okay, thank you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and grant you mercy and peace. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. She is as the creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. Yet she on earth has union with God the three in one. And mystic sweet communion with those whose rest is one. O oh, blessed heavenly chorus, Lord save us by your grace. That we, like saints before us, may see you face to face.